Hello, and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. I have a lot of people watching my videos, aircraft dispatcher, practical exam prep. So let's talk about taking your actual practical exam. Here are some helpful tips. Beforehand, make sure you are looking at the FAA guidance. For those who have never taken an FAA test, you can find it in what they call the practical test standards. I will put a link down in the video description so you can check this out. This is essentially the guide of how the test is going to go, including every single knowledge area that will be covered or could be covered during your test. You also want to make sure that you complete your paperwork beforehand. Make sure you check it over for errors. Your school or wherever it is you're getting your dispatcher training should help you with this, but it goes a long way to have a correctly completed paperwork. It shows the examiner that you know what you're doing. Of course, you're going to be studying, but like, how do you focus your studying? Well, one thing I really recommend is using the practical test standards to take those knowledge areas and then produce information. Maybe you handwrite it if that works for you. Maybe you make flashcards. I don't really know what works best for you, but you look at all the areas in the practical test standards. And if it says meteorology, then you look at under that area of meteorology, you're going to look at METARs and TAFs. Okay, can I read all the parts of the METARs and TAFs? And I'm including like the weird little numbers at the end. If you don't know what the weird little numbers at the end means, I got a video for you. Check it out in the video description below. I also have some stuff on my own website to help you decode and study for these things. But what I'm saying is go through the practical test standards, look at every area because that's what they're going to ask you. That's the test. So essentially, you kind of know what they're going to ask going into it. Also, since you've been in dispatch school, you've probably been doing some fly plans. It's also good. You know, <clears throat> I even tell my dispatch students, take an old fly plan that we did during our class. We actually do six in class. I make them do four as homework. We have another one for the final exam. But take a fly plan that I gave you before. Get some blank forms. Do the fly plan again. Do it with a different route. That will help you practice if that makes you feel better about it. Also, organize your stuff. So by that, I mean, when you go to the test, you know where to find things. That means maybe reviewing your course materials so you know where to find the answer if you don't know the answer off the top of your head. And spoiler alert, you are not going to know every single thing the examiner asks you. There's going to be something you don't know and have to look up. Also, make sure you're ready to pay for the test because these tests do run you know, where I am at, and I don't know about the whole United States, but you're looking at at least five to $600 for the test itself. So have that ready so you're ready to pay and know how much it is. And if the examiner doesn't give exact change, well, then you better bring exact change or a check or Venmo, find out how they get paid, find out what they accept. Don't just show up not ready to pay. All right, now we're on exam day. So I tell my students dress professionally, like wear a polo shirt, Wear a nice dress blouse. If you're a guy, you can even wear a tie. You know, if you're a woman, you can wear a tie. But okay, look professional. Give yourself a nice intro, handshake, have the payment ready. Don't mess around with that stuff, but just be ready to go. Of course, like I just said, bring your materials. This is somewhat of an open book test. By that means you can bring whatever into the test that you want to bring into the test, generally with a few exceptions. You cannot bring in internet connected devices and they are serious about this. You cannot just use uh, flightplan.com to plan your whole flight. Okay. Um, I don't know any examiner is going to allow that. And basically, if you look back at the practical test standards, it says you can't do that. So don't expect to have your phone on you for a while or your internet connected iPad. Some schools, you might have a electronic manual system, but it's likely on not on an internet connected device. So don't expect to just Google everything for the answers. You can't. Also, I highly recommend putting little flags or highlight pertinent regulations, things in your manual system, things in your op specs that you want to know about and you can find again. So it's something where you can look it up easily if you forget. You should expect at least 
a four hour exam. I've seen them go as long as six and a half hours. So the exam is going to be a good portion of your day. So make sure you know you go to bed early, eat a nice breakfast. I recommend you stop studying the night before before dinner. Okay. And then after dinner, like don't try to cram. You're not going to learn anything new. Go watch a movie. Go binge watch something on TV. Read a book. Get a good night's sleep. Show up before the test nice and early. So hopefully you're there when the examiner gets there. All right. With flight planning, you are going to plan a flight. The examiner is going to tell you what to plan. But most likely you can use your materials from training. At least we can. So the dispatch examiner brings a flight plan, gives it to the student, the applicant. You can do your fly plan using the materials that you used in training. Highly recommend to bring little sticky flags. You can get them in the huge amounts from Amazon. And then you can stick these things on your flight that you're planning. If you're planning with paper stuff, it actually really helps. So make sure you're doing that. Check also your time zone. So sometimes the examiner might give you the time of departure in UTC, or it could be local time. Make sure you know, okay, because that's going to directly affect your weather, which is going to directly affect whether we need an alternate, fuel requirements, etc., etc. Also, be ready to read notams. One of the things our dispatch examiner emphasizes, because it's a big deal, being able to read notams. So if you have notams, please consider that when you're doing the flight planning and know how to read them. You are going to need to look some things up, most likely. I mean, like your fuel burns, your weight and balance things. Yeah, so you're going to have your materials from training. You can look things up. But there is a time limit. I mean, if you are going to be spending four hours planning the flight, most likely it's not going to go for the dispatch examiner. At this point in your training, you should be able to produce a flight plan, manual flight plan, in roughly two to two and a half hours. If not, you should be practicing and getting faster at using your materials before you go take the test. If they ask you to do something outside of OPSPEC. So one time we had a student who went to the exam and the examiner gave the student a flight plan and it included an airport that was not in our OPSPEC C70 of an airport we could go to. And so the student just went back to the examiner and said, excuse me, Sorry, I can't go to this airport. It's not in the OPSPECs. We don't have any charts for it. We don't have any data for it for our performance. And he said, oh, I'm sorry. Whoops. Okay, so give you a new flight plan. But most likely they're not trying to trip you up. But you also need to know what's in your OPSPECs. So that's something you check. So you don't flight plan outside the OPSPECs somehow. And if you can't do something, have a plan to maybe what you could do. So if they ask you to plan to an airport where you can't due to weather at the time of arrival, the proposed time, then you could offer an option like when you get to explaining your flight plan part, you want to sell what you did. So that brings me to my oral tips. So if you like say you couldn't plan to the airport at the time of arrival, you don't just don't do anything, don't not flight plan, but you could say, okay, well, listen, we could fly slower so that we get here after a certain time period. We could we could leave later. We could delay the flight. We can still do this flight, but here are the limitations I have to work within because you want to be able to explain why you planned what you planned. That's really important. And when you can do that, then you kind of just show the examiner, you know what you're doing. You're trying to show I am a dispatcher. I can think on the fly. I can make a decision. I emphasize safety, but I also am trying to get the mission done. You also are going to be expected to basically conduct a briefing. So that might be the examiner saying, hey, tell me what you flight planned. And then you go through and you conduct a briefing, like a pre-flight briefing, as if the examiner is the crew of your flight. Again, in the video description down below, I will link a example of me doing a briefing. Some people like to watch that as a practice. Okay, it's just an example flight but explain what you know while you brief. So not in huge detail, maybe, but if you say, well, I noticed there's some Virga that's in my METAR for our departure airport, so I'm going to expect some turbulence. Make sure that your captain knows that. There could be some turbulence on departure, and that's going to show that you know what it is. And then you could even say, you know, Virga, 
being this downdraft of air. I know that might cause some turbulence on our departure. So like now you've told the examiner you know something about what Virga is as one example. So like weather stuff, routing, why did you route what you routed? Why did you use the route you routed? If you used an FAA preferred route, that looks great. Explain that you use that routing. And what op specs apply? Like if you used derived alternate minimums, most likely they're going to want to see you do it. What op spec did you use? Can you demonstrate that you know how to do it? Eventually, you're going to shift away from explaining what you planned, and the examiner is going to ask you some questions. Eventually, you'll probably get a question you don't know the answer to. Don't just make things up. Please don't just make things up. You can stop and say, oh, this is a fantastic question. It's escaping me right now, but I know where to look that up. And then see what they say. If they say nothing, just pull out the book from your bag or wherever you've got your pile and look it up. If they stop you, okay, fine. They might move on to another question. That's fine. The other thing I want to say about oral, when you get asked a question, let's say they say, all right, here's the abbreviation BR in a METAR. What does that mean? And you're like, that means missed. Stop talking. You don't have to explain what causes mist. You don't have to explain what it might do, why it might reduce visibility. Is the runway wet or dry or blah, blah, blah. Just answer the question. Stop talking. Wait for them to ask something else. That's it. That's a really good tip for all orals. But for dispatch students, sometimes they've never done a pilot oral. Don't just add extra information that they didn't ask for. Answer the question. Stop talking. But if they ask you, what is BR in the meet her and you're like, oh my goodness, I totally escaping me with the answer is say, you know, I know I should know that abbreviation, just a moment, and then pull out the aviation weather handbook, a real FAA source, and bring it on and say, okay, I know where it is. I know what chapter it is. I'm going to look it up. I'm going to show you the answer. Oh, there it is. BR. Missed. I should have known that. Okay. And then move on. Don't sit there and beat yourself up about how you couldn't remember. Safety, if they want you to do something that's somehow unsafe, like, you know, you're planning a flight, and you're like, wow, there's not enough fuel to do this flight with how much extra fuel I have to have for an alternate or whatever else I'm planning, holding fuel, whatever, then maybe you plan a fuel stop or you tell the examiner, yeah, I planned a fuel stop here because we couldn't do the flight at the time you wanted to depart, or we could leave later, not need all this alternate fuel, and then we wouldn't have to have the fuel stop, but Basically, you're showing that I want to communicate safety is the top priority. We do want to accomplish the mission, but we have to do it within safety. So I hope that was helpful to you guys. Check out the links down below for some other resources. And have a great day from me over here at Aviation 101 with Laura.